Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome to Construct Your Life. This is Austin Linney here. Guys, we have the honor of having, he's done a billion dollars worth of real estate. He is a legend. No, I'm just messing with him. But I just, uh, he, he's the first podcast ever. We got him on, Mr. Lane Babin. How are you doing, sir? Oh, I'm doing great. Very I'm happy. Great. To awesome, man. I appreciate it. So, you know, with my guests, what I like to do is I let them, you know, start their story wherever they want and kind of go from there. And I've had to, put bumper rails in. I, I don't want to hear about when you were two years old. So let's, you know, some guys are like, yeah, I'm just messing That's up. That's the fun but, part, though. <laughs> but yeah, man, start your story wherever you want. We'll, we'll go from there. Well, great, man. Look, I appreciate it very much. Appreciate the opportunity to share my story. Uh, maybe it helps one person out there grow, find their goals in life. Uh, basically, 39-year-old wife and two kids living in South Louisiana. And for the first 35 years of life, I did the quintessential American lifestyle. I'd go to college, get a job, um, go out and work your W-2, make other people wealthy, work your way up the corporate ladder. And I just always felt that something was missing. felt like I needed to do more. I would look at people with businesses, real estate. They, how do they do it? I don't understand how I'm not doing that. Uh, and I... I had a, a earth-shattering moment, and it's, it's going to sound very normal uh, in, in life, but I was basically five years ago bathing my daughter. She was one years old and happened to be watching a Facebook feed of a friend of mine who actually I'm invested with in, a, in an apartment deal now, um, posted a, something that he lost his job, wholesale a deal, made seven grand in real estate, and I was like, whoa, what is this, right? Um Fast forward, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, changed my life, my perspective, paradigm shift, went on the next uh, several months of just a journey of learning everything about real estate because I knew there was something more to feed inside of me. Um, started actually buying properties in 2017, took on a partner. We went in it together at a very slow first two and a half or so years. We did three deals. Whopping three deals in, in that, many, that much time um, and wanted to do more. Uh, partner and I's goals kind of changed. They shifted a little bit and we, we both could tell. So I ended up parting ways. Um, still real good friends. It wasn't a bad breakup or anything. Real good friends with them and just had a difference in our vision. And I knew I wanted more. I kept wanting to grow, grow. I got I to gotta speed this up. I need to get where I feel like I should have been years ago. Um, and so now, the past few years, I buy single family properties. I've been doing my own direct to seller marketing for the last couple of years. Now, venturing into some multifamily, um, doing a little flipping, wholesaling as well. So things have, have really shifted in such a short amount of time of just kind of putting some focus into it. And I think one of the things that, uh, that people have wrong when you go from the job, the W 2, to the real estate or running your own wholesaling or flipping whatever you want to call it is is not it's not that you're working less like you're you're, you're probably actually working more but, but 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 you're in control of when you work and 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 so that's really you know obviously the money's great and and building financial freedom is great but like i i would imagine that regardless if, if the money was exactly the same that's probably what is most intriguing for somebody that switches out of that w2 role correct yeah, you know what never fit with me in that debut too is I would see managers and owners of companies making decisions and I just would see a better way. And, uh, you know, it didn't always just coincide with their vision. And that's okay, that's their vision. But I, I saw a different path to do a lot of things. And so it, when I started creating my own business, my own real estate investing business, and got to put my touch on things, it was a sense of freedom and a sense of accomplishment that I had never felt before. Sure, it's great. You, you're working for someone else. You get a promotion. You get a pat on the back. Everybody loves that. But 
in the grand scheme of things, like that wasn't for me. Uh, and so when I made that decision that, and I just went full time in real estate at the end of last year, I finally ripped the bandaid off. Um, it was two days of, oh no, what's going to happen? Is life going to end? There's no safety net. And then it was waking up the next day and knowing I control my day. You know, I control my life. I control what I want to do tomorrow. And uh, betting on myself, know that I'm going to bet on myself. I'm not going to, I'm not going to let myself fail. I'm going to let myself fail for my family. What advice would you give to the guy that uh, was the, was the gentleman that was sitting like yourself, meaning you, what advice would you give to yourself of the guy that was, you know, kind of felt like he was stuck in the job to where you are today? Action, man. Take action. Um, in, improve your knowledge. You're going to be scared to do anything, to take any chances, to take any leap if you don't have an understanding of what you're trying to do. I immersed myself when I, when I decided, yeah, this is, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure out real estate. I spent three or four months of, I, my wife would actually get mad at me. I constantly had earbuds in. I was always listening to podcasts. I was always listening to books. I was trying to just feed everything I could into me. And um, I, I, did, I wanted to feel prepared. I didn't want to go into it, take a leap, make some horrible mistakes because I didn't know what I didn't know. I still don't know a lot every day. I learn stuff every day, but I knew enough to take action on that first property, and it was scary. And after you, after you take action, uh, you're consumed with what to do next, and you're less worried about what your fears are, what your worries are. So for that, for that person, figure, learn something about it, and take some action. And anybody that has a, a job or whatever, and, and, and you didn't have a big operation, you didn't have like, you know, the, the mojo dialer and all that stuff, like how does somebody get started, you know, creating a little side hustle that maybe start dipping their toe in some wholesaling? What, what is your, how do you, how do you get started? And so many, so many ways that can be done. Um, you know, there's, that's the beauty of real estate. There's an infinite number of ways to do it. There's an infinite number of, infinite number of ways to structure a deal to make to make money to create value that's the number one thing you're trying to do is create value for someone else and that value is compensated back to you very often in in monetary basis um you know so for me i figured that hey i don't i'm in a i moved to a new town six years ago seven years ago now i didn't know as many people in the area um as where i lived for most of my life but, all right, well, I don't know all the realtors. I don't know how to go find deals. I'm, I'm going to go find my own deal. Um, so I took some action. I joined a mastermind group um, with the sole purpose of I want to pay someone to get me past the learning curve. And they, it, it happened 100%. Basically helped give a formula of like, hey, here's the steps that we do. Here's how we build, find potential sellers. Here's how you market to them. For me, it's direct mail. I do direct mail. I do some online marketing. Uh, still sourcing my own deals today. It's been three years now that we've been doing it, and my deal flow grows every year. So nothing better than finding your own deal. You just have some upfront capital to it. There, you, know, you can get them from the real. You can find them on the MLS. People think it's dead, but there's deals there every day. What was easier than you thought before you got started? Easier than I thought. Oh, have the whole process of, of buying and taking down the property is, it looks like an insurmountable mountain, right? And you've never done it. All you've done is maybe bought your own personal house and you don't know what you do. You got a realtor holding your hand through it. And um, you take that first one down, and butterflies, scared it's gonna fail, you're gonna lose a million dollars. You know, you, you might only have 50,000 wrapped up in the property, but it feels like you have everything on the line. And once you rip that Band-Aid off, you get one under your belt. It, it's kind of just rinse and repeat at that point. What was harder than you thought? Harder than I thought. Uh, allowing myself to not think small. I, I do it every day. You know, I've had several conversations. I, uh, I, I, wanted, I, I have to teach myself to think bigger. I, I didn't allow myself to think that way growing up. It was just kind of get the college degree, get the job, go work hard every day, and not... Oh man, like 
all of these opportunities in the universe here in the world, it's not that hard to go get if that's what you want to go get. So learning to allow myself to, to stretch every day, think bigger every day, push my goals every day, and just keeps me super motivated. I told a client today, I said, once you crash, once you cross a certain threshold in the money that you can bring in a month, your mind doesn't mean that you'll make that every month. It means that the mind knows that it's possible. And so it, it can always access that when needed. And so it's the same thing when, you know, uh, I told you, I told you the story. Like I went to Nashville, I went to a Jake and Gino money mixer and the guy had like 250, he had like 250 units and they, they took down a, a 1,460 unit portfolio. And he was like, don't get me wrong for that. Like, there's no chance I thought I could do it, but we just worked the process. My dad had a finance background. We figured it out and we bought it. And he goes, now my mind can't go back. And yeah. so maybe do that thing, right? And, and people don't understand, like part of me in business is pushing up against who and what I can contain because I want to see the edges of myself. I want to see where I have to grow because if I do that, then I'm going to look back six months from now and go, wow, dude, you like really got a lot done. And I think that's been the biggest thing for me is like, I just interviewed one of my first business partners on the podcast. He listened to all of them. Like really the podcast for me is a documentation of like my life and how far it's gone. Yeah. yeah. For me, it's like yeah. two years ago, it feels like the podcast started like seven years ago. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you know, I had no idea that was going to be, that's going to be the true outcome of this podcast. Well, I mean, there's many benefits I'm sure, but yeah. it's documenting your life, your growth. And like, Exactly. And I'm like, I'm like, who's that mustache wearing shaved head guy, the first episode in his apartment in, in San Antonio? Like I've moved like six times since then. So it's like, you know, it's great. And so, you know, I know that one of your passions is helping, you know, other guys uh, who have, uh, you know, they're stuck in the job and stuff. And I, I think that what I found, and I'm, I want to curious ask you is that happened for me when I started doing Airbnb outside of my job, I didn't care about my job that much. And I don't mean like I didn't care about it, like I didn't show up to work. I mean that it didn't stress me out mm -hmm. the same way. Because then when I was doing Airbnb, I just saw my job as a springboard to buy more Airbnbs. Like when you, when you, when you only have that one thing, it feels like you're like suffocating. Yeah, I mean, I, I was at a point in my W2 career um, and I was working morning, nights, and weekends. I was literally wake up at 3 a.m. every day, work on real estate go to work, work all day, get off of work, go work on real estate. Weekends, I was working on real estate. So that time of being at work, sure, I, I wanted to show up. I wanted to be accomplished and successful at my, my job and execute for everyone there that I was working with because I had a really good rela relationship with everyone I've always worked with, which has been phenomenal for me. And But I saw it at some point, there was a, there was a switch that clicked in me that it just became a springboard or an opportunity to build more real estate because, I'll, you know, it helped a lot there in the very beginning because you're bankable, you have a good paying W2 job. So the banks don't have a big issue lending to somebody new that, you know, I could walk into a community bank and get a loan to go renovate a property that I would then refinance and hold it around or renovate and flip it. So that it was a big plus, big advantage um, that some people don't have, but, you know, it's not the only way to do it, but for me at, at, at that point, switch flipped and it's like, okay, a couple years into it. Now, how do I start planning my exit on this? It's kind of where it progressed after that. Yeah. And I think it's something that people don't talk about enough. Like be careful to leave your job so quickly. Like one of the things they don't tell you about entrepreneurship is like, good luck trying to get a loan. Like, yeah. yeah. You know, like I heard a story of a guy who had like 10 mil in the bank, but he didn't have an income for three years and he tried to buy like an $80,000 car and they wouldn't even finance it. So it's like, you know, it's, it's, I think I had to buy cash, but I digress. He's fine. But what I'm saying is like, you know, that is like a superpower, you know, to like max out your W2 to get loans before you leave. And then you can figure out a different way to do it with private lenders and so on and so on. Um, yeah. So, you know, as you scale uh, and as you scale your flipping business and as you scale your wholesale business and you're buying multifamily and, and trailer parks and uh, mobile home parks and all that stuff. Um, what have been the lessons that uh, have helped you grow the most and, and, and kind of, you know, as you reflect on that, like what's kind of, what have you learned the most about scaling the business and hiring your assistant yeah. and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. So, man, there's a few things that kind of all feed into this. Um, 
first thing is like you set your mind to it and quit's not an option anymore. If quit is an option, you will find a way to back out of it. Um, here in South Louisiana, we're thinking crawfish out of it. Crawfish swim back. Um, and, but you'll find a way out of it. You'll weasel your way out of it because some part of your subconscious is scared to, to do it because it's scary. You've never done it. It's new to you. So you got you to gotta be all in. You, you got to be fully committed. Um, the other big thing, man, that progressed me mentally as much as helped me get more consistent in my business was, um, you know, when I first started in the real estate, my wife and I had a discussion about it. And she's like, I gave her this crazy idea about these books I've been reading. Like, hey, I'm going to buy some rental property. She basically said, you're not draining our savings account for this. Um, so, you know, she had some hesitation at the beginning, but she trusted me to help make some good decisions for our family. Um, and while working full time, it was a big stress on our family. Uh, and I always, I always put added stress on myself, which was, was a big hurdle for me progressing because every time I was not home with the, with her and the kids on the weekend, at events were missing in the evenings for dinner, I was out looking at properties or making deals or checking on rentals or whatever it was to try to grow that while working full time. That was a huge stress on me. And so in January 2021, she and I and another couple, uh, some friends of ours that are in real estate as well, went and did a little goal setting retreat. And on that retreat, we talked about what do we want our goals to be for the year? What do we want to see in 10 years? We had never talked about this before. We never had that, that detail of a conversation about it. But when we left there, and this was the big, the big aha for me that helped me springboard and break down a barrier uh, was knowing that she was 1,000% on board with the goals that she and I laid out for the year. And that was a huge mental barrier. So, you know, that... Not think, or uh, excuse me, that quitting is not an option. Having your spouse or your partner on board, hundred percent, because that will hold you back mentally. You will not, like, you won't know it, but it's gonna do it. And then the last thing is, man, I know I'm still in the grand scheme of things. I feel like I still think small in what I want to accomplish, and it's growing every time I I reach new levels levels in my career. Uh, but the sooner you can start thinking big and bigger and farther and uh, beyond the things you ever thought you could possibly do, the sooner you're going to get to them. So those are probably three of the, the biggest hurdles that I've been overcoming, still working to overcome, but the more you identify them, the sooner you're going to get past them. It's, it's a, it's a, uh, I guess my biggest concern with like the question I get a lot is uh, like, there, you know, you must feel amazing every day. Like, no, <laughs> not, not, even, <laughs> not, not even close. Like, but it's, but what I've really identified is it's, it's, it's those times that you don't want to. And I'm not mean, I'm not saying show up wrong. I'm not saying, but it's, it, it's gutting through those, those days where you're not feeling motivated. It's gutting through that, that, that meeting, you know, when you're not really want to be there. It's gutting through that, that due diligence and like looking one more time, like, you know, I, I, there's this weird thing that always happens to me. Like, um, like every time I'm like, man, I don't want to go to that meetup or I don't want to go on that call or I don't want to do that. Like something good happens. And it's like, I just try to, I just try to tell myself like, you, you don't, like just show up and you don't know what'll happen. And I think a lot of people, uh, Incredible. they let their emotions, you know, like half of the battle is just showing up and like being available for the opportunity. Yeah. The, the more you go through the motions, the more it becomes normal, natural, and and accept it by you mm -hmm. for sure do it take an action Just yeah take an action in a small step right for that for the person that is an introvert that says oh i, I can't go to this ria or this uh, meetup i'm too scared to talk to anyone well just go there and like learn something there's always a little educational portion to it go there and learn something then leave all right next time try to do a little bit more but as you go you become more comfortable it's just like with anything you become a little bit more desensitized and it gets, it gets easier. Mm -hmm. 
And you, uh, you know, this last year at the end of the year or this year, you, you finally bought the uh, multifamily that you've been looking for, you know, to step out from single family and, and flipping and wholesaling to buy the multifamily. And now you're, you know, in contract on a, a mobile home park. Uh, you know, um, was that a big jump for you or, or did you always know you wanted to be there? And then, you know, how can anybody kind of move out of their regular investing and, and kind of step up to the multifamily space? Yeah. So that was something in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't care that I went to that. I was like, Oh, I'm going to buy single family houses. And then you, you buy a few single family houses and you say, Hmm, there might be a little more to this. I can go bigger, faster. And saying that going into the multifamily, same situation last year, I, I made a decision that I wanted to move into multifamily, start learning it, understanding it. Same thing that I did when I decided I wanted to do single family investing. Uh, I paid someone. I found a group, a community, the Jake and Gino community, phenomenal people um, that run the community, that are, that are in there as other investors. And there's a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of people looking to help. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to pay to be part of this community and learn as much as I can. And literally 30 or 40 days later from joining that, I had a 77-unit apartment complex under contract, which you asked me that last January. And I said, you're crazy. There's no way I can buy an apartment complex. I don't know how to do that. So, yeah, that was big, man. That was huge. Yeah, and I try to tell everybody, like, no offense to all the people that run these masterminds, but you know, you think you're going there for the information. I'm saying that you're going there for the people that are in the group with you. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, I think if you pick the right community, there's a healthy combination of both, but the pe- you're going to gain more lifelong partnerships, friendships, advisors, mm-hmm. confidants from the communities that you're in with these other people. They're all there. Everyone's there for the same reason. Uh, like those are the people that I literally hang out with a lot now, it, you know, whether it be virtually or going to events, it's because we're all driven to the same goal, same type of mindset, and you have such a strong bond, such a strong connection with those folks, and uh, it, 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 you break down the, you, you break into uh, just lasting relationships and partnerships really quickly because of it. You cut through all the bull. Mm-hmm. So I. Um... I've done a uh, half Ironman by myself. I've, I've biked like 75 miles uh, and, and, you know, listened to a couple books while I was biking. Uh, but you're one of those crazy people that, uh, which I never understood. And I still, I still mentally don't understand how you can get it done. Um, I, I have a, th- I have a theory and I'll, I'll, well, you love ultra marathons. You love to, to race. And, and I have, I have, I have a, a theory. And, and I have a theory why people do it, okay? And, and that runs 50 miles. Because at some point, you run out of the thoughts in your head. That's what I decided. Like, you're running, running, it's running. You're facing with pain, actually. <laughs> you can't think about it. You, there's nothing more you can think about. Like, I literally, uh, so I ran a race last weekend. And nothing crazy to most people, but like 32 miles, 50, 50 k. I ran this race last week, and... Uh, first 13 or so miles, I ran with this 64 year old guy. The first 50k, we had the most phenomenal conversation for two and a half hours. Super great guy, and finally he said, "Look, I'm gonna slow my pace. You keep going." So I put a book on on my on my earbud, and I'm listening to this book. It's a real estate book, loving it. And I get to you know 25, 26 miles, and the book kept playing. But I had no idea what it was saying. And I, I figured that out today, actually. I got in my truck, and I went to put the book on, and it was starting over. I had finished the book, and I never even knew it. So, I, yeah, at some point, you 100%, you nailed it. You run away from your thoughts. You run out of your thoughts, but you replace them with pain. Yeah. Does it hurt? <laughs> yeah. What got you into that? Man, uh, jumped in on a whim. A friend of mine decided he was going to run a marathon. and. Um, that you know what, you probably should have a accountability partner or somebody to do it with. So jumped in on a whim and trained together kind of virtually. We didn't live in the same town. Went and ran the San Francisco Marathon in 2019 and then decided, wow, there was something there, man. It it was life-changing. You literally get emotional when you cross the finish line. Like 
freaking tears. Like you can't hold it back. Everything inside of you is just coming out. And it's it's not that oh I just ran twenty six point two miles, right? It's that I just did something more scary, bigger, and harder than I ever thought I could do in my entire life because it is just extremely uncomfortable. And there was an instant connection for me between that and my growth in real estate of gosh just i'm breaking through these physical barriers but it's not physical it's more mental than anything because it hurts and it's scary and i don't know what's going to happen next and that's just the same thing that happens every day in real estate when you're pushing yourself to do bigger deals or more deals or you know different types of deals moving into multifamily mobile home parks and working with new lenders. Um, so it has been such a parallel mindset shift that I have fallen in love with uh, with ultra running. So kind of a thing that I do now, I sit it in in the morning, run on the weekend. My wife and family are super supportive of it. Um, you know, bought a little camper that we can drag around and bring the kids with us. So it, 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 it just, it helps me grow as a person. Yeah. Hundred percent. I, you know, one of the things that clocked for me with a with the cycling is is you can, especially for an alpha, uh, a type A, uh, you can never win. Yeah, like you, can, you can't win. You can always be better. You can always be go farther. You can always go faster. So there is something like that attaches the mind to something like that. I truly enjoy it. And yeah, it's also and as a as a type A, you're used to always winning or excelling at things in your life, right? And you go do one of these races, and if you're not one of these elite athletes, you have no shot at winning. But you just you're just another number, another name on the roster, on the starting line. So that's I think that's another factor of it too. Is you learn to accept that you're not the number one dog out there, mm. but that's okay. That doesn't mean you're not succeeding. That doesn't mean you're not progressing. That doesn't mean you're not getting better and winning at your own battle. Mm-hmm. And that's what's huge as well. Everyone in these races. I line up on races where somebody's running a 10K and somebody's running a 100 miler. They might both struggle the same amount in that same race, in their own perspective races, mm-hmm. because there are different points in their life. There are different points in their career and, and mentally, physically, whatever it might be. But you can respect that just as much for every person. They don't have to be the, number, the person crossing the finish line first. Read. And so if people want to uh, find out about you, they want to follow your journey, how would they do that? And um, so I've got a, uh, my local marketing website, Bayou Property Partners. Uh, you definitely can check us out there. We do all our direct seller marketing. Um, you can find our email on that as well. Feel free to reach out social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Lane Babin. Easy, pretty easy to find there. But would love, I love connecting with people that are starting their journey because I can see myself only having been there a few years ago. And uh, they, they feel like they've got a bunch of dumb questions, but it's the same questions I was asking three years ago. And there's nothing, no better feeling than being able to help, being able to help that person take their first, second, or third step forward and, and get started on their journey. Because everybody should own some real estate. Everybody should also run ultra marathons too, but I don't know that I'm going to get anybody in that. <laughs> Love it. Wow. Yeah. Well, I think what's interesting is, is that, uh, you know, what I've realized is that people that I'm drawn to, uh, they might be great investors. They might have plenty of units, but more importantly, they're just good people. And, and you're one of those guys and guys, you know, I think we can all clap our hands for him. I, I, I think he, he crushed, he, he can cross this off the list. First podcast in the books so uh you know guys make sure give him a follow uh pick his brain Uh, if you like this episode send it out to your friends and we'll see you next time thank you for listening to construct your life with austin lenny if you enjoyed this episode be sure to rate review subscribe and pay it forward by sharing with a friend Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on -on one-on-one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.